This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Morning, Bob. Welcome back to halftime. I know it's been a couple weeks on vacation and then uh, headed back from media days last week. So uh, it's good to have you back again, man. How was the trip? Uh, it, it was good. Um, you remember we, we spoke through the through the rain. <laughs> Tom was driving, but uh, it, it was a good trip. I mean, I think Nashville did a good job hosting the event, and um, it was at a nice. Uh, you know, they had, they had a good setup and pretty pretty productive. You know, but and after fourteen teams, your your mind's kind of going. You know, like wow, that, that that's a lot of info to digest. And then I'm thinking next year it's going to be two more teams, and not you know just anybody, but Texas and OU and doing in Dallas, so it's going to be an exciting event next year. And I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of get my head wrapped around doing 16 teams. Of course, I don't write about all of them. Me and Tom divide that up, and Wally's writing columns about everybody. But uh, that's a whole lot of teams. I guess that'll be four teams a day for four days. That's right. And I'm wondering, I don't even remember how many teams are going to be in the Big 12 by then because their math changes on, like a, uh, on a monthly basis. Um, what do you think of uh, – of uh, this news that Colorado will be headed to the Big 12. The assumption is there is another school that goes along with them. We're over here in the SEC like, yeah, everything's peachy keen over here. We're just trying to figure out if we're going to play eight or nine football games and can't see this conference expanding much any longer. But uh, when the news broke about Colorado, what are you thinking? Well, yeah, it's not a total shock, although – yeah, the the Pac-12 seemed like they were kind of being held together by, you know, some, you know, scotch tape or whatever. Losing no, uh, losing uh, USC and UCLA was such a blow to them. Really, they're two big marquee teams. I mean, obviously Oregon, Washington, Arizona State. You know, though, though, I mean, it's it's been a good league for a long time. And of course, I remember when it was the old Pac-8. And then they added the Arizona schools and, and Colorado and Utah. And so you just wonder, um, th- th- there's definitely more teams in the Pac-12, I would say, that are worth, you know, picking off if you're, um, you know, the Big 12 or who knows, you know. Um, you know, the, the, the Big 10 could look at maybe adding a, a West Coast division because right now you've got USC and UCLA that have come so far east to play well, what if you added, uh, like, Oregon, Washington, the Arizona schools? All of a sudden you've got, uh, or maybe not all of a sudden, but eventually you've got a, 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 a Big Ten West, you know? And so the California, you know, USC and UCLA, are, they're able to stay in their own time zone more. So, um, yeah, I think this Colorado move might just be the first shoe to drop and yet another round of ex- expansion. Bob, you, you talked about the teams being at the SEC media days. Is uh, is there anybody else besides Georgia winning the East, and who do you got coming out of the West? I picked Alabama. Um, I certainly think LSU is capable of of repeating. I mean, they won it last year, right? You think they'd be better in Brian Kelly's second year? And I'm not, you know, a team like Ole Miss or Arkansas, A&M. Uh, you know, I think a and is going to be pretty good. I mean, we know they got a lot of talent, right? And they, I would say they greatly underachieved last year. We know the heat is really on um, you know, Jimbo Fisher. And so, you know, by Petrino, whether or not that was his idea or he was sort of told to do that, I don't know. But I do think by Petrino can make a big difference for their team. So um, I think the West is a little more wide open than the East. But I, do, I just feel like, you know, Alabama, after – you know the horrendous year of eleven and two and winning the Sugar Bowl by twenty five points. There, they're, they're going to bounce back pretty strong. Yeah, they really got a chip on their shoulder, huh? Alabama just hasn't had any success. <laughs> well, I, I mean, seriously, we we joke about it, but I do think they're hungry and they're motivated. Um, they don't like the fact that Georgia's won the last two titles. They don't like the fact that Georgia's ranked number one. Everybody's talking about Georgia. It, it's very rare that Alabama sort of flies under the radar. If you can be you know, call being picked probably to be in the top, you know, two or three, four teams in the country in preseason polls and picked to win the West. But, you know, Georgia is the two-time defending national champion. They're sort of everybody's, you know, big pick right now is the top program in the country. And so, you know, that doesn't sit well with Alabama. I'm sure it doesn't sit well with Nick Saban. Not that he doesn't, you know, like respect Kirby Smart, but that's his protege over there that's, that's been handed to him the last two years. 
And so, um, yeah, I think Alabama's really hungry and motivated because like they have something to prove, which I think that's a rarity with Alabama. They're usually trying to fight off complacency. Where did you have Arkansas in that, uh, in that poll? I, my thought was Arkansas media would probably uh, <clears throat> vote, vote the Razorbacks a little higher than non-Arkansas media. Uh, maybe that's the case for most schools uh, in college sports anyway because you're more familiar with them. But, I'm, I mean, I, I went through every team's schedule, um, and, and I, I've got Arkansas uh, at 9-3 and three right now. I'm an, I'll, I'll rejigger my whole pick uh, once we get before the Western Carolina game. But uh, I think this team can have a winning record in conference. I think the key is at least winning. you got to win a couple of games outside of Arkansas, and I think they can do it. But I, where did you have Arkansas finishing, and how many wins you th- you, you see them with? I'm trying to remember. I think I picked Alabama, LSU, A&M, Arkansas, Ole Miss, um, Auburn, and Mississippi State. I will say, I think Mississippi State's a pretty good team, so it's hard to pick them seventh. Um, And they have Will Rogers, but, you know, somebody's got to be picked seventh, right? And I think Arkansas can do better than fourth. But my criteria was I just think Alabama and LSU have the most talent. Um, you know, Alabama's still got to figure out their quarterback situation, but they got Nick Saban. And then I really, maybe I'm, uh, you know, giving the Aggies too much credit, you know, but I just think they really underachieved last year. And I think, you know, by Petrino, whatever you think about him, he's, he's a brilliant play caller. And I think he can make a huge difference for him if he and Jimbo Fish can coexist. And then, you know, I really like Arkansas from the standpoint of having, you know, KJ Jefferson. A fifth-year quarterback with a fifth-year quarterback in the same program. Now he's he's got a new coordinator, but I think he and Danny Ellis had a. I mean, I, I would pick Arkansas higher in a lot of leagues. It's just the SEC West is so uh, brutal, I guess, and, and, I, and I I really hate their first four SEC games. None of them are in Fayetteville, and not only that, they're at LSU and at Alabama and at Ole Miss, and then A and M and and up neutral. So I just wonder, how do they survive that first half of the conference season? You know, we'll, we'll see. But I think I have picked fourth in the West. Who do you see the leaders on this defense, Bob? Uh, what, what's your thoughts on Terry and Carter, you know, coming off of injury and, and, and supposed to be uh, uh, on that D-line and, and be a menace? Do you think this D-line really can be disrupted? And, and who are the leaders of this defense? Well, that, that's a good question because, you know, some of the, the older guys aren't, aren't here anymore. Um, you know, Eric Gregory is, he's not the most vocal guy, but he's a guy that's been around. I think he's got the respect of his teammates. He's a guy that can play inside and out on that D line. So he, he's a guy that I think could be a, a team leader. You know, Blue Paul, linebacker, he's only a sophomore, but he's not your typical sophomore. He played, you know, he, he had to play a lot last year when, when Buffer Pool was banged up a lot. And of course, he played, started in the bowl game. I, I think he started maybe the last three games or so because Buffer was all banged up. But, um, I really like Pooh Paul, and I think as a young guy, I could see him being being a team leader. Landon Jackson, I was super impressed with him at Media Day. I, you know, we talked to Landon before, but maybe not in that setting. And he was really impressive. He was a great interview. I, I stuck with him down in the what we call the big room, the main room, where they bring the players in. And he covered a lot of different topics and just, I uh, just thought he did a really good job. Great. I mean, all those guys did a good job, but I thought he was really impressive for a guy that maybe, you know, you don't, he hadn't heard a lot about. He wasn't a guy that was showing up on all conference teams, but um, maybe I'm just drinking the Kool-Aid, but when I was talking about how he felt like they were really three deep and all those defensive line spots, you look at some of the, the guys they brought in, you know, like, like I think Tank Booker from, from Maryland. He's a guy we didn't see in spring ball. He was a late uh, transfer portal addition, but he really spoke highly of him. And then some of the other guys they brought in, you know, uh, for, you know, they had transfers from you know Missouri. Uh, Trajan Jeffcoat is a an experienced SEC player who is productive at Missouri, and they've got you know other guys in from Power Five programs. And so, um, I, obviously, the defense has got to be better if they're going to move up, right? And and, and yeah, I did I did feel better about the defense after listening to Landon. Bobby, uh, we, we've gotten into this, I think, before. And jo- jokingly, it's like you're one of the stars of Media Day. So many coaches say that they're, they're told to give you the first question, and they do that, I think, more often than not. Um, 
You ever feel pressure of uh, of asking that first question? And um, you, you're always going to ask a good one, but it's always followed by another. You never ask just one. You go with you go with one with a follow up inside of that. And I think the coaches are sort of you know used to this. Uh, how many questions do you have at the ready before one of these press conferences? And and let's also take that into what's about to happen once camp starts, which for reporters is also. It's not camp. It's Zoom season because you're going to have like three or four of these per week. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll we'll, we'll do some. You know, we're do, doing you know combo Zoom and in person at Arkansas, and um, yeah, you know, it kind of depends because me and Tom Murphy and you know, my coworker we, we divide up the uh, the teams. We, I think it's a good it's a good uh, thing to do. We do a, a series. Of, we do a preview on every team, and I get some people may not care about Vanderbilt or. You know, Mississippi State. We're like, we had Mississippi State run today. But, I mean, Arkansas was going to play Mississippi State. They obviously have a new coach after the, you know, the tragic loss of Mike Leach, uh, you know, right before the bowl game last year. But I think people like reading about the SEC, especially this time of the year when there's not a whole lot else, you know, going on, you know, college uh, sports-wise. And so but it kind of depends. If I ask somebody something, am I doing that team or is Tom doing that team? So, um, but, of course, Kevin Trainer, who's from the UA, I've known Kevin since he was a student. And he does he does a great job as the moderator, so it kind of helps that Kevin knows who we are. And I'm not saying he's going to guarantee to call on us all the time, but but it helps that helps. But yeah, I definitely. Anytime I go into an interview situation, I jot down some thoughts and questions. And sometimes somebody else asks what you were going to ask. That's kind of the thing. Let's say even hold up your hand, and then somebody right before you asks a question you were going to ask. So you need to maybe have an extra one, an extra one there too to be ready. But. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny how that media day stuff has evolved, but I always have a good time there and enjoy getting information from the coaches. We'll leave it there, Bob. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, we'll do it again next week, okay, once we're in August, finally. Okay, you guys take care. Thanks, Bob. Bob Holt from the Democrat Gazette, who's just shown reasons why it's always good to get the first question. That means nobody can ask your question. Inside the preparation in mind of Bob Holt, it's scary in there, but I, I, I liked it. <laughs> I hate asking questions at press conferences. Hate it. I feel nervous. I, so I don't really do it very much uh, when I'm in on these things. It's just like you're waiting for them to call on you. Your hand is up or your virtual hand is up. And then it's your time. And it's like the butterflies are right there. Uh-huh. I don't. I feel less nervous doing a three-hour radio program or I don't have, a, a, I don't have an idea what the heck I'm going to talk about. Let's open the McClarty Daniel hotline, 877-377-6963 for calls and texts. Stay with us. Right back. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.